something really fun and these are my cream puff shells and here are the ingredients that we need one cup of milk a half a cup of unsalted butter four eggs one cup of flour one teaspoon of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt a recipe note if you are using salted butter simply omit the salt in my recipe so those are the ingredients so let's get started alright our first step we're gonna get our milk into our pot there we go I'm gonna get all of our butter in there as well and what I want to do is just bring this up to a very quick boil and then I'm going to reduce the heat. So I'm getting everything in here. I do have a portable hot plate that I'm using. There we go. This just makes it really, really easy. Make sure I'm on camera. There we go. So the first thing, we're just going to let this come up to a boil. Just melt everything nicely together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here and I will come back when this is almost melted. Alright, this is a couple of minutes later. I'm not sure if the camera can pick up the steam coming off. But I am stirring this because I don't want the milk to burn on the bottom of the pan, or pot rather. So we're getting there, we're almost up to a boil. I just want to get this very hot and then what we're going to do is we're going to pour in all of our flour which is the one cup of flour so we're almost there I'm just removing it from the heat just to control the the boil a little bit better you can see now my bubbles are coming so that's it so I'm just going to turn the element right off and now I'm going to dump in all of my flour and I'm just going to start incorporating that so I just want to stir that up You can see how thick this is. I'm going to mix this up well and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be heading off I'm going to, to the, the next step which is going to be where I'm going to put this into my KitchenAid mixer. I'm going to whip this up and we're going to pop in our eggs and I'll just mix this up a little bit and then I'm going to head, head over and we're going to do that. So I will, I will pause the film again and then we'll get that done. So right now I just want to get this really nicely mixed together. There's still a lot of heat in here. Just want to break it up a little bit. I'm not too worried about lumps right now, or I'm not worried at all, because our mixer will take care of that. And once the eggs are incorporated, this is going to get really, really nice. Okay? So right now that's it. I'm going to quickly set up my KitchenAid mixer and I will be back. Alright, I have set up my mixer. That took me about two minutes to do. I, the only thing that I did was I dumped in our nice batter into the bowl. I'm going to get my paddle attachment on here. I'm going to lift the bowl into position. And now we have four eggs to incorporate into the actual dough. And this is kind of a dough slash batter because right now it looks more doughy, but after we add the the actual eggs, then it's going to look more like a batter. So I'm going to crack the eggs and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I have all of my four eggs ready to go. Obviously, if I was doing this and not doing a video, I would just crack my eggs one at a time and I would just pop them in like that. But because I am doing a video, I just wanted to get all of my eggs ready to go here. So let's get on with the video. So I'm going to get my mixer going, get my first egg in. We'll just incorporate that first egg. Now you're probably wondering, what do I do if I don't have a mixer like this? You can do this while you still have the mixture in your pot. So use a large pot like you saw me use and just take your wooden spoon and add one egg at a time and just constantly mix. Or you could use a hand mixer if you have that. Okay, so our first egg, I'm just going to mix this a little bit more. And I'll put the second egg in. Egg 
number three. And egg number four. So I'm just gonna whip this for about a minute or so, and then I'll come back. All right, I've been mixing that for about a minute or so, and you can see how nicely everything has come together. So at this point, we are finished with the mixer. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to clean up my work area here, and I'm gonna get all of this mixture into a large piping bag with a very large tip on it. So that's my next step. So what I'll do is I'm gonna load all that in and then I will come back in a couple of seconds. Okay, we'll get all that in there. That's good. And we are ready to go. Okay. All right, I have a baking tray here with some parchment paper on it and we're going to pipe our cream puffs right onto this paper. I'm just going to set up here so it looks a little better and I'll be back in a second. All right, I always put a little bit of batter just on the bottom here just to hold the paper in place, just like that, just a little bit, just like glue. A little dab will do you. There we go, and we're ready to go. I'll start here, in this corner right here. So I've got my piping bag. You can do any shape you want, and any size. I'm just gonna stay here, apply some pressure to give it some body, and then just bring it down and I'm just gonna pull, just like that. So I've got myself a nice little cream puff shell. I'll do another one here. So I'll just hold my piping bag, squeeze, and then just bring it down, just like that. Okay, right here. So what I'll do is I'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Because we, we are zoomed a little far, so I'll just zoom in. Okay, I've just zoomed in a little bit. So get your piping bag in place, give a squeeze, and then slowly bring it down and just pull away and stop any pressure on the actual piping bag. Let's try that one more time, right here. So I'm going to squeeze, stay there, apply, and then come down, and just let go of the pressure now and just pull. There we go. Okay? So I also want you to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I just zoomed out a little bit, just so you could see overall what I'm doing. So I'm just going to push, and then bring it down. Push. Let go of the pressure, pull down, push, down, just like that, push, stay in the same place, let go of the pressure and then just pull down and drag it away, push, just like that, and there we go. So I'll continue doing this, and I'll be back in a second. And there we go. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to do, these are going to go into my 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to drop the temperature down to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for another 10 minutes or so. Then, I'm going to turn the oven right off, I'm going to open up the door about six, inch, six inches just to let the, you know, most of the, the hot air out, and then I'm going to let them just sit in there and they're going to dry out until they're actually cool. Once they're cool, then I will remove them from the oven. So I will see you in quite a while. So off to the oven and I'll see you later. Alright, I'm back and my cream puff shells have completely cooled. You can see how nice and brown they are. And I'll just get a little closer to the camera so that you can see these. There's one there. I'll show you another one here. Okay, so these are nice and cool now. Beautiful. Mm -mm. So, 
What am I going to do with these? Well, in another video, I made a pastry cream. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to use that pastry cream and we're going to fill these beautiful shells. So that's the next step. All right, so here is my pastry cream that I was just talking about. If you want to see a video to this, I will provide a link at the end of this video. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill my disposable Wilton pastry bag. This is a 1M tip. I'm going to fill that with our beautiful pastry cream and then we're going to fill our shells. So I'm going to go do that now. I'm going to fill up my bag and I'll be back. All right, I have a serrated knife here. That's the best for cutting these open. And then what you want to do is just go right down the middle, just like this, and just cut them right open, just like that. And there we go. So there's one. Make sure I'm on camera here. Right down the middle. And there we go. I'll do another one. And you can fill these with pastry cream, or you can fill them with nice nice whipped cream, mmm yum there we go, I'll cut another one up so right down the middle serrated edge is the best way to cut these alright just move a few of these out of the way okay that's the bottom, that's our top alright the pastry cream, I've put that into a piping bag and then I'm just going to pipe a little bit right down in here. You can put as much or as little as you want. No rules. Just like that. And then we're going to take the top and put the top on. Okay, so I'll do that again. Okay. There we go. And just gently place it on the top and there we go okay and for a finishing touch you can just take some icing sugar I just have mine in a little sprinkle shaker and you just get your icing sugar right on the top there and there we go look at that beautiful these are really really yummy I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time Yum. Oh, that's good. Two and a half cups of shredded sweetened coconut, half a cup of regular granulated white sugar, a half a teaspoon of pure almond extract, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, and our last ingredient, three egg whites, and I used large eggs for this recipe. So that's it for the ingredients, so let's get started. For our first step, we're going to get all of our egg whites into our bowl. So that's three egg whites and I weighed this out exactly 91 grams. To that I'm gonna add my one-eighth of a teaspoon of salt and then I'm going to measure in half a teaspoon of pure almond extract a half a cup of white granulated sugar that's 115 grams and then I just want to aerate this a little bit so I just want to get my mixer going in here and I just want to fluff this up a little bit just want to loosen up those egg whites so not too much just want to get them frothy a little bit There's not much to this recipe, it's super, super simple. 
So just like that, everything's nicely incorporated now. We'll turn this off. You can see how nice that is. And now we're ready to add our sweetened coconut. So this is two and a half cups, exactly 300 grams. Just get all of that in. And then we just want to make sure that everything's coated really well. So you just want to mix all of this in. You could use your mixer as well. But I find this is relaxing. So the important thing here is to just make sure that all of that sweetened coconut is well mixed with our liquid mixture of the egg whites and the sugar and our almond. And I do have my oven already set to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a slow oven. We're going to be basically partly baking these but also drying them out. So it's a very low oven heat. Okay, that's good. So now we'll get these onto our pan. In today's recipe I am using a silicone mat but you can also use parchment paper if you wish. I'm just going to use a small cookie scoop. I'm just going to compact this a little bit and then right on to our tray. So this is not a cookie that's going to expand much. So you can place them a little closer together if you wish. And our last one. Perfect. And now I'm going to pop these into my 300 degree Fahrenheit oven. I'm going to bake these until they're golden brown on the top and then I'll come back. So here we are again. I bake these for exactly 35 minutes in my 300 degree Fahrenheit oven. At this moment these are extremely hot so I'm just going to let them cool down. I'm going to remove them from my little silicone mat and then we're going to zoom in on one and we're going to try it out. So this is about an hour later. My little coconut macaroons have completely cooled and we have here a total of 20. So as promised I'm going to zoom in on one and we're going to break into it. So hopefully the camera is picking up how nice these are. Really nice and golden brown and look at the bottom nice and golden brown as well and they smell amazing so I'm just gonna make sure I'm on camera here I'm just gonna break into one I want to show you you can hear that nice gooey but look at this so it's crunchy on the outside but still really moist on the inside let me just open this up look at this mmm oh. oh that's really really good a nice burst of coconut flavor and that nice caramelized sugar on the outside, really good. I'm going to have to go for another little piece. Mmm, really, really yummy. So that's it for this really fast and fun video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wish. I really do appreciate that. And if you're on Facebook, you can check me out at facebook.com slash bakelikeapro. I'm over there as well. Also on Pinterest at pinterest.com slash bakelikeapro. And I will have some pictures of these macaroons on my Pinterest page as well as Facebook. And just before I go, one other option that you can do with these, which is very, very popular, is melt a little bit of chocolate and then you can take the cookie and just dip it into the chocolate and then put it down on a piece of parchment paper or your silicone mat, let it firm up and that adds a really nice extra little option to this type of cookie. But that's it for today and I'll see you next time. Texas sheet cake. So here are the ingredients that we need. One cup of salted butter, one cup of water, two cups of granulated sugar, two cups of all-purpose flour, two eggs, a half a cup of sour cream, six tablespoons of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of vanilla, and our last ingredient 
one teaspoon of baking soda. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. For our first step, I'm gonna get my butter into a large bowl and I'm gonna melt my butter down. So I'm gonna pop this into the microwave. I'm gonna melt this and I'll come back. While my butter is melting in the microwave, I'm also gonna take my one cup of water and I'm gonna heat that until it's hot in the microwave as well. So here's our butter, all melted down, and I did use the defrost mode because I want a very gentle heat when melting my butter. We also have our water, and I'm gonna get that in there. The water is extremely hot. And I just use the regular mode to heat my water. And then to that, I'm gonna add in all of my granulated sugar. I wanna use the heat that is in our bowl, in our two ingredients, to get all of that sugar completely melted. So I wanna have a very smooth cake. Just give that a little whisk. And then I'm gonna add in the cocoa powder. And you can see why we sift. You see all the little pieces in there? I'm going to grab the back of a spoon and just break those through. Perfect. I'm just going to grab my whisk and just get all of this well mixed. And my oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that's completely mixed, I'm going to switch over to an electric mixer just to make this easier. So the next thing we're going to do, we'll get our eggs in. We'll grab my mixer. So that's egg number one and egg number two. Okay, so that's good. Once you feel the eggs are well mixed, we're on to the next step. And I'm going to get in all of our really nice sour cream. I love sour cream. Use a spatula to get everything out of your bowl. That's good. Grab our mixer again. And just mix in the sour cream. good and then we'll get in our final ingredients we're gonna get in our vanilla I'll just give that a little stir so we have our flour and our baking soda and the baking soda is what's gonna react with the sour cream in this recipe. So instead of using baking powder, we're using baking soda. And then final time, grab our mixer, and just slowly mix all of this in. Really, really simple recipe. So I'm just using speed number one. Just slowly get it all combined. So that feels nicely combined, so we are ready to fill our pan. I'm going to be using an 11 inch by 17 inch pan today. What I've done is I've lined it with parchment paper. All I've done underneath, I greased it a little bit just so that the parchment paper would stick. And then as usual, I just use my little metal clips to hold my paper in place. If you're not gonna use parchment paper, you're gonna grease your pan and then you're gonna lightly flour it. We'll grab our batter. And we'll get that right in. Oh, that looks so good. Now since this cake is so thin, you really have to be careful. You're talking about 20 to 25 minutes maximum in your oven. Okay, that's good. While I was washing off my hands, you can see that the batter is spreading out by itself. 
there's no need to really you know touch it too much you can kind of move it around I can remove my clips now and then just get it into the corners and that's good so now I'm going to pop this into my 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 20 minutes so here we are, exactly 20 minutes in my 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. This smells really, really good. Extremely hot at this point, so I'm just gonna let this completely cool and then we'll come back, I'm gonna finish off the video. We're gonna put on a really nice chocolate frosting and we'll finish up the video. So this is about an hour later and my cake has completely cooled. So at this point, we can frost it. So we'll frost it first and then we'll cut into it. What I have here is a dark chocolate frosting. If you want to see a recipe for this, I'll put it in the link underneath this video. So I'm just going to frost this up. And this is a really, really nice frosting. I think that's pretty good. Just grab an offset spatula and we'll just quickly frost this up and you can put on as much or as little as you wish I am probably going to add a little bit more all right I've decided to use the whole batch oh this smells really good so you can see that this is a really, really simple cake and the frosting is really simple as well and you will enjoy this frosting. I think that looks good. Perfect. So the last thing to do, we'll just get right in here and cut a nice piece. You can see with that parchment paper, it just makes it really easy to get this out. Look at that. Ooh. So let's turn this around. And I'm going to zoom in so we can actually see what we've done here. So I've just zoomed in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Look at that nice cake. And this cake is super, super moist. Watch this. Look at that. See how easily my fork cut into that? Mmm. Wow. That just melts in your mouth. Well, that was really, really good. And as you see, the first piece of a cake like this, when it's in a tray, is never the nicest piece. So you might want to cut off a little bit of an edge and then start your cake coming this way. So once you take out that little piece, it's easier to get the cake actually out of your tray. So for the beginning of my video, I'm actually just going to chill this cake a little bit so that I can get a really clean slice and that's what you're going to see on a plate, something like this. A really, really simple recipe. I hope you try it out. This is a really, really good cake. And a quick note before I go, if you want to print out either of these recipes, either for the cake or for the frosting, they are both now on my website. That's it for today. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wish. I really do appreciate that. That's it, and I'll see you next time. Three hundred grams of all purpose flour, one hundred and seventy five milliliters of hot water. 250 grams of unsalted butter, 250 grams of chocolate, and I'm using semi-sweet chocolate in this recipe, 125 milliliters of milk, 55 grams of cocoa powder, four eggs, 550 grams of granulated sugar, 30 milliliters of instant coffee, 30 milliliters of vegetable oil, two and a half milliliters of baking soda, 10 milliliters of baking powder, 
and five milliliters of salt. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. I have a glass heat-proof bowl here over a little bit of simmering water, and I want to start melting all of my butter, my chocolate, my sugar, and our hot water and coffee. So I've heated my water. I'm going to add in my instant coffee. The hot water will help that dissolve. And then I'm just going to pour that in as well. So at this point, I just want to let all of this start melting together. I'm going to let that melt down and then I'll come back. So this is about five minutes later. All of my ingredients have really melted down and it smells really, really good. So at this point, we're done with this step. I'm going to remove this and I'll clean up and I'll be back in a minute. Now that I've cleaned up, we are ready to add to our hot bowl of ingredients. I'm going to add in my milk first, which will decrease the temperature of my mixture. I'll grab my mixer. I'll start mixing that in. And now I'm going to add in my four eggs. There's one. Two. Three. And four. I'll add in my vegetable oil. And then we'll start adding in our dry ingredients. So I'm going to sift these in. So I've got my all-purpose flour, my baking powder, my salt, baking soda, and my cocoa powder. And then I'll grab the back of a spoon and just push the rest right through my sieve. Perfect. I'll grab my mixer, speed number one. And I'm just going to get all of this nicely combined. And I do have my oven set to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that is well combined, we are ready to fill our tin. I have an 8 inch diameter baking tin here. I have lined the bottom with parchment paper as well as the sides. And we'll just get all of our beautiful batter right in there. Okay, that's perfect. So now I'm going to pop our mud cake into my 300 degree Fahrenheit oven for about two hours. All right, here we are again, and my cake was in for exactly two hours, and I'll show you how beautiful this is. I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up. This is extremely hot. We're going to have to let this cool down before we unmold it. I'll just lift it up so you can see. Now look at that. Really, really nice, and I can't tell you how nice this smells. Really, really good. So I'm going to let this cool down, and then I'll come back a little while later. When your mud cake has completely cooled, you can now remove it from the tin, and this is a tin with a removable bottom, so I'm going to take my hand and I'm just going to place it in the bottom, and I'm just going to gently push up, just like this. I'll slide that ring over my arm, like this, and there we have our cake. And then we'll just unmold the cake. Take our parchment paper right off, and there is our beautiful chocolate mud cake looks amazing. So here's the cake a little bit closer up. I just wanted to show you this. It looks amazing and it smells really, really good. You can see how high the cake is in relationship to my fingers. Really, really nice cake. So our next step, we're going to cover this with a beautiful dark chocolate butter ganache. 
I'm just going to show you how to remove the bottom portion. I just want to get a little knife right in between and just give it a little turn and it pops right off. And then our beautiful parchment paper, just gently peel that right off our beautiful mud cake. Lovely. So at this point, you could just pour your beautiful chocolate ganache right over as is. However, I want to make this a little bit more straight. So I'm just going to cut off a little bit of the top. So I'm just going to go around. And as I turn the cake, I cut into the cake with a sawing motion right through. And if you don't get it perfect on the first shot, you can go again. I'll just remove that little bit. Then we've got that little bit here. And I just want to make sure that it's pretty well even. And that looks good. And you can see how moist this cake is. This really is kind of like a fudge kind of cake, like a brownie cake. Really, really nice. You can see very, very fudgy. It looks beautiful and it smells so good. As soon as I was cutting into that, it's like boom, you just get this really nice aroma popping out of that cake. So I'm going to clean up and then we're going to frost. So I've cleaned up and we are ready to go. I have a tray lined with parchment paper to catch all of my beautiful dark chocolate ganache so that we can reuse it. So I'm going to grab my ganache and I'm just going to start pouring this over the cake. And if you want to see this recipe, I will put a link at the end of this video and also in the description box. I'll just turn this around and finish off the front area. And that looks perfect. And I just want to bang this around a little bit just to get it a little bit more even. And there, that looks good just like that. So at this point, I'm just going to let this set up for a while and then we'll come back, we'll finish off the video, we're going to cut into a slice and I'll show you what it looks like inside. Okay, I'm going to cut into our beautiful mud cake. Oh, I can feel that is a really, really nice cake. Just slide my knife right through. I just cleaned off my knife with hot water and now I'll make my second slice. And let's get this onto a plate and look at this wow super super moist just like it should be a beautiful chocolate mud cake let me zoom in so I've just zoomed in to show you this beautiful chocolate mud cake a little bit closer. You can really see how moist this is and this is a very, very dark cake. It should be dense like this. It, you want it to look like a brownie inside. It is a very, very dense cake, but it's very, very moist. So we have the mud cake here and then we have our beautiful dark chocolate ganache and this has butter in it as well. So it is really, really rich. Of course, I'm going to have to try a little piece of this. You can see how nice that cake is when I cut into it with my fork. Oh, that is so good. Super, super, super moist. Beautiful, beautiful cake. I hope you try this recipe. I'll have to go in for a little bit with that dark chocolate ganache. Oh, that is good. I can't tell you how good this cake is. I hope you give this recipe a try. A really fun one to do. Not too hard. I think you'll have a really good time with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a really fun one to do. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wish. I really do appreciate that. That's it for today, and I'll see you next time.
35% milk fat, we're going to be using a 10% cream today. In the last six months alone, I'm sure I have had over a hundred questions asking me what other type of cream I can use other than a whipping cream which is rated at 35% milk fat. This cream that I'm using today is 10% milk fat and is usually used in your coffee. Because this cream is not as thick as whipping cream, I'm only using half the amount. Here I have a half a cup of chocolate chips, but we have reduced our cream by half, so I'm only using a quarter cup of 10% cream. So now that I've taken a couple of seconds to explain this, let's get on with the simple recipe. So I'm going to change up the technique a little bit and we're going to heat our chocolate instead of the cream. So I'm going to get that half cup of chocolate chips into my bowl and now I'm going to microwave this until it's melted on the defrost mode. So I've microwaved my chocolate chips and at this point they don't look like they're completely melted but if I grab a spoon you can see that all of a sudden it just starts turning into a chocolate, you know, nice uniform consistency. So I'm just going to mix that around so you can see really, really nice. Then we're going to add our cream to the chocolate. We'll get that in there. And then we're going to slowly start incorporating the two. So at first it's going to look like it's not going to work, but a little bit of time and patience and everything's going to start coming together. You can see the cream now is starting to look like a chocolate milk. I'm going to just slowly, slowly incorporate both of these ingredients together. Now the cream was cold, so the temperature of the chocolate has dropped drastically. So I am going to have to introduce a little bit more heat into this mixture. So that means I will be putting it back into the microwave just to give it a little bit more heat. Always on the defrost mode. So to stir here I'm just using the back of my spoon and just a little bit of a movement here. And you can see now it's all coming together. But you can see it's a little bit lumpy still because the chocolate has not completely melted and that cold cream is kind of seizing it up. It's trying to make the chocolate firm again. So at this point, I'm just going to pop this into my microwave for about 15 seconds, defrost mode. So that was 15 seconds in my microwave, defrost mode. And now you can see right away, as soon as I start stirring, you can see that the, the whole mixture is a lot more fluid. Not sure if the camera's picking that up. But at this point, you wanna just keep mixing. Now could you use a larger bowl? Of course. And can you use a little whisk? That would be even be better. And you could also use an electric mixer just to whip it around a little bit. And that looks good. So that looks really nice, like that. I think I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see the mixture a little bit better. So I just zoomed in and hopefully you can see how nice this is. If I can tilt it up a little bit is that good like that? Can you see that? I'll bring it a little higher. Really, really nice. And this is perfect right now to pour over a cake. So I think what I'm going to do now, I'll just set up with a little piece of parchment paper and we're going to put a little dab on the parchment paper and then I'm going to chill it down just to show you about how firm this can get when it's cold. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to give it a little stir. And then we're just going to take some of this. I'll put it on a little piece of parchment paper. And just to make things really fast, I'm going to pop this into the freezer 
I guess I'll time it to, you know, to know exactly how long it was and then I'll come back and I'll show you how firm this can become. So this here is 15 minutes in the freezer. So our chocolate ganache with our 10% cream in the freezer, 15 minutes. So I'll just get a knife here and I just want to show you how it looks and how it behaves. You can see that it's quite firm. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. And if we do a little bend test, just to show you here, where are we? Okay. You can see it's very, very firm. Look as I bend it. So you can see even with that 10% cream, it makes a very, very nice chocolate ganache. And this would be good in chocolate truffles as well. You can actually form this. It's solid enough to do that. So there we have it. Now that I've shown you how the chocolate ganache firms up when it's cold, I'll just show it to you again at room temperature. And that's a really, really nice chocolate ganache. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it answers a lot of questions about using a 10% cream in a chocolate ganache versus a very much higher fat cream like a whipping cream like you usually see me do. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wish. I really do appreciate that. That's it and I'll see you next time. ganache. I have 200 grams of dark chocolate, one teaspoon of instant dried coffee, and our last ingredient, one cup of heavy cream. This is whipping cream, 35%. And a recipe note, if you want your chocolate ganache to have a very, very strong coffee flavor, you can double the instant coffee from one teaspoon up to two teaspoons which would be about four grams. I heated my cream up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit and we're ready to go. I'm gonna grab my instant coffee, and just get that right into the cream. Just gonna stir that in. Instant coffee always dissolves better in a hot liquid. I just want to get that in there, mix it in completely before we add it in with our dark chocolate. And that looks really, really nice. And then I'm simply going to pour that right on top of our dark chocolate. And I want to let that sit for about two minutes. I want the chocolate and that whipping cream to slowly start incorporating. I want it to become friends with each other nice and slowly. So this is about two to three minutes later, no more than that. I'm gonna grab my little whisk and I'm just gonna start slowly incorporating this. You can see the magic happening. So I'm just slowly stirring this from the middle. And if you find your mixture is a little bit on the cool side, you can put this over a pot of water, a bain-marie, and just incorporate a little bit more heat into the bottom of your mixing bowl here. Get it all in here. And about another 30 seconds of stirring here and here we have our really nice chocolate coffee ganache and hopefully the camera is picking up how nice and smooth this is. Really simple, really amazing. If you want to see me using this exact glaze in another video, I'll put a link to it below this video in the description box. In that recipe, I'm going to be using this really nice glaze on top of it. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video and I'll see you next time.